guys, this is Raven from Pressing the Painted Button. And Christmas is just like right around the corner. It's tomorrow. No, that's Christmas Eve. Christmas is on Sunday. Oh well, better late than never for this video that I meant to record a long time ago and I did not. Go me. So, as we all know, the holidays is a time of cheer and joy and festivity and all sorts of stuff that is overwhelming to anybody with a mental illness. So today I have you five tips on how to survive the holidays. And this can also be used for any other holiday you celebrate like Thanksgiving, Easter, Hanukkah, Kwanzaa, um, I don't know, Leif Erikson Day if you're into that. So let's begin. Number one, first and foremost, this is the most important thing ever. Know that you do not have to be happy the whole time. Just because the holidays is a time of joy and cheer does not necessarily mean you have to be happy. And if you aren't happy that day, know that that's not a problem. I mean, not everybody's happy all the time. And especially people with mental illness, we are notorious for being able to paint on that fake smile. But please know that you don't have to keep that smile on. If you're upset about something, or if your depression or anxiety or whatever mental illness is kicking you in the butt that day, you don't have to pretend to be happy. You don't have to be happy at all. If it's Christmas morning and you're bawling your eyes out, just know that that's okay. It's not, but it's not a bad thing. Okay? Number two. This is something that I actually have coordinated with friends. Especially if you're going out shopping with people or going to a party and you're with people you know. Have a plan of action. As in like if something were to happen, have a plan as to, okay, what can we do if this happens? For example, my friends and I at a Halloween party we went to, basically all of us are anxious in some way. So we came up with a safe word and a and also a hand signal if we can if we really don't feel like we can talk so the safe word was a word that we don't normally use in conversation so we chose headlights and then one of one of us i can't remember who now said well you know my anxiety causes me to not want to talk so we also came up with a hand signal and we learned that this is sign language for panic which ironically looks like headlights. So we have a safe word and we have a safe hand gesture, which there you guys go. This means, this is panic. So if you wanna try that with your friends, go for it. You can use whatever safe word you want. Kumquat, sword, I don't know, uh, Barbara Jones, whatever you wanna use. Have a plan for how to let your friend know something's going on because of course, those of us with mental illness are also very good at pretending to be okay and wanting to hide things from the people we care about. We could be, our world could be destroyed and falling apart around us, but we're not even gonna let our best friends know. That actually annoys one of my friends, but you know, that's just something we've always done. So have a plan in mind. So have, if you want to do a safe word, safe hand gesture, know an escape route. So, know where you can like step off to be by yourself or, you know, if you need to leave, leave. So have a plan in mind. Number three is to make an emergency kit that you can keep with you at the party or, you know, in the car or wherever of things that will help you whenever you are having some kind of mental crisis or some kind of mental health issue. For me, personally, I would have to have four things. One, my cell phone. Because if I'm anxious, I tend to play on my phone a lot. And of course, I will need it to go with the second item, which would be headphones. Because sometimes if I'm feeling too anxious, I have to drown it out with music. So, head phone, headphones, those are always good. The third item would be some kind of stress toy. Um, I've mentioned in my things I've gotten from therapy video as to a few stress toys that I have, which were like the marbles and um, a stress ball. And what was the other one? I can't think of it at the time. I'll probably link it down here whenever I realize what it is. 
but you can also get like little chain fidget toys or little squishy stuffed animals or jewelry you can fidget with just something to like be able to mess with your hands if you need to and then the last item would be my panic stick which a panic stick is essentially a chapstick tube filled with beeswax coconut oil and something else I think I don't I think it's just beeswax coconut oil and olive oil and then a blend of essential oils that I personally made for my own anxiety and someday I will make a video on how I made the panic sticks if you're ever interested in making your own but what I do with the panic stick is I will actually rub it into my wrist rub my wrist together sometimes depending on how severe the anxiety is I may put some on my temples and that just helps with like event getting you calm back down and then of course the smells are the most important sometimes I'll just rub it on my wrist and then just sit like this no I'm not being a weirdo it's because my oils are on my wrist and I'm smelling them I also have a diffuser necklace that I wear so if you're one that's into essential oils maybe even bringing your diffuser necklace would help you number four take time to yourself I know the holidays are all about giving to everybody in the world your mom your dad brother sister best friend neighbor mailman I don't know the lady who bags your groceries at Walmart but we never think to take care of ourselves and take time for us and of course the society that we live in wants us to always give to other people and if we take care of ourselves that's selfish look Self-care is a real thing and is very important for your mental health, whether you have an illness or not. If you can't have self-care, you're going to fall apart. So remember to take time to yourself. If you need to not go to that one holiday party that your best friend invited you to, don't go. If you need to, you know, get yourself something for Christmas that would help. Like, you could go get a massage or... Um, Maybe stay at home with a good Christmas movie or just something to help recharge you. Personally, what I would probably do is try to, you know, take time off of plans and I would stay home and snuggle my dogs because my dogs make me very happy. Make sure to take time to take care of yourself because if you, okay, I'll put it this way. This was a quote that I remember from Sarah Beth of Sarah Beth Yoga, and she is wonderful. You need to be able to do things that fill your cup so that you can then pour love to your family and friends and whoever. So if you can't take care of yourself, you're leaving yourself as an empty cup. How can you pour love out to other people when you don't have any love in you? So remember to take care of yourself. The fifth thing kind of goes with the second the second thing with having a plan is separate yourself if you need to. Know that it is perfectly okay that if you're feeling overwhelmed to like step out or like step into the bathroom for a little bit or go outside. If you need to separate yourself from people, please do it. The bathroom is usually a wonderful place because, you know, people aren't going to question why you have to go to the bathroom and you could just sit in there. And I mean, if, it, if you sit in there for a long time, they may assume, you know, some digestive issues, but you'd rather that. <laughs> I know personally, I would rather someone think that my stomach was upset rather than the fact that I'm having a massive panic attack. Um, stepping outside is always a great option because fresh air, fresh air is great, even though it will probably be frigid air. But sometimes you also need that cold to kind of shock you a little bit. And if you, if you can't go to a bathroom or go outside for any reason, which I don't see why, but if you can't, then find somewhere to just go be alone. Whether you like go off into a corner or even like pop in your headphones and listen to some music. You need to take time to be alone because that is also a huge part of mental health, taking care of yourself, and ultimately, it will help you to survive the holiday season. So I hope you guys really enjoyed this video and I hope that this was helpful for you guys. I'm hoping this will help for Christmas Eve and Christmas. And then of course, for whatever other holidays you got going. 
like Hanukkah, Kwanzaa, Easter, Valentine's Day, Thanksgiving, uh, I don't know, Arbor Day, whatever happens. So if you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends that need help with figuring out the holidays, and I'll see you guys later. Bye!